Welcome everybody to the War and Peace Baseball Podcast. I'm here today with Alex Rudy and Farbod Markazi. I'm Alex Uwe. And, uh, you know, I hate to start the show this way. We've had to do it a few times now, but we do have to acknowledge the loss of Jordano Ventura and uh, former Major League player Andy Marte, who we both lost to a car, separate car accidents on the same day in the Dominican Republic. It is unfortunate, as it always is, and um, there's not a ton of details um, around the case right now, but the point is drive safe and, uh, you know, try to learn from their mistakes. They will obviously be missed, you know, in every other aspect of life, but Ventura on the field, too, was definitely a bright star. Um, he had that potential, so, you know, if you guys have anything to add, I mean, now's the time. Uh, um, well, I think one of the things um, about Jordano, um, I mean, rest in peace to both of them, first of all, um, sorry, thoughts and prayers are with their families, friends, fans, everyone, but um, one of the things about Jordano that I've I've just been thinking about um, is that, and I, I've been like watching videos of like how what everyone said about him, like th- those close to him, his teammates, and uh, I was I came across a video like yesterday, and it was um, about one of his teammates said um, that he he um, he was going through his highlights, and like he he was saying about how every one of his highlights was um him fighting with someone not him pitching or him like doing something good and he didn't like that but the thing um the thing like that i wanted i kind of took away from that was he not a lot of people i'm sorry if i word this incorrectly but um not a lot of people um liked him out of royals land out of um the fight club land if you if you will um because of the stuff he started, but when you take what what I've done over the last couple of days, I've just taken a step back. I was like, this guy is a guy who um has a huge heart, and he loves his teammates, loves the game, and he had a lot of potential to be great. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to, you know, kind of take a step back from that. He obviously wasn't the most liked player in the the baseball universe for you know all the reasons that we've mentioned before but he is definitely you know there's more to life than just baseball he he had more to offer than just what he did on the field that does not represent like how he how he is all the time as a person I'm sure he has there's a lot more to him that we can't speculate about and you know now it's it's another life that's taken it's it's always sad so uh you know if with that you know if you guys are ready we can go ahead and move on and start talking about some baseball it's been a long time hasn't it very very long i mean yeah but we do have some fresh some fresh meat here to talk about today a trade some fresh, fresh meat some fresh meat fresh meat fresh meat um fresh okay. meat for the for the rays i guess de leon is pretty fresh meat um the dodgers have officially traded uh jose de leon to the rays in exchange for um logan forsyth who you know for months now been talking about dozier and dodgers and when is it going to happen what what how what's it going to take to get it done well it, it didn't take anything because they ended up going with foresight which i think is probably you know going to be better for them in the long run um I, i'd assume they would have had to give up much more for dozier so um what are your like initial what were your initial thoughts i like i had definitely have my own opinion i on um i i thought well, wow! Um, the the Rays getting a young starting pitcher and giving up offense—big, big surprise. But also, yeah, they've um, never done that before. No, that's yeah, they've never not not, not first time. Out. That's but, preposterous. But um, I, I think this guy. Um, I, I I think they. I mean, I'm not t- trying to take anything away from Logan Forsythe. Logan Forsythe is a great player. He's a good addition to the. Um, to the Dodgers. Yes. I think um that Nailed the it. Rays um yeah. No. I, <laughs> I think that um what the Rays got is a another like like I said another Rays move and it's a Jose De Leon has a chance to be something special and um yeah. I would say that uh 
You know, the Dodgers rotation right now looks pretty full to me, I would say. They really didn't look like Delion was going to break through anytime soon. I don't really see. I mean, there's Kershaw. They re-signed Rich Hill, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, Meta, obviously. Urias, they need the spot. Um, even if he doesn't get them immediately at the beginning of next season, he's going to take a spot very soon. Um, and then, you know, Kazmi and McCarthy and Ryu, you have three guys and fighting for that last spot. Alex All Wood also. Need, Okay, him too. So any of those, any of those guys could 100% um, take that spot. Like I wouldn't be surprised. So, and in fact, they could push out Urias to maybe the bullpen or back to the Niners just right next year, possibly too. So, you know, the ah, Dodgers. Don't say that. That gives me chills. I mean, uh. I don't want that to happen necessarily, <laughs> but like it's it's not like unreasonable. You would agree, right? And you know, the Dodgers, you know, need to go in right now, go all in right now. Well, they need to go in um, all in every year. That's yeah, their, so that's yeah, that, yeah, so I, I I think it's a I don't think Forsyth is like gonna win them the World Series on his back. I don't think he's a you know oh, no. giant game changer, but I think I would definitely rather have um, his contract than let's say the thirty th- like a thirty four thirty four year old Kinsler's um, for maybe slightly less production, and definitely would rather have them um, than overpaying for Dozier, who is an outstanding player, but. You know, he in one or two years could he might be producing the exact same as for as Forsyth for all we know. He was a guy who came out of nowhere. It's hard to predict how long, you know, those kinds of he's not young. It's hard to predict how you know long those kinds of guys you know last. So, I think ultimately, yeah, maybe the Dodgers could have gone a you know a flashier second baseman, but I think they gave up an you know an affordable cost for a very solid, and dependable guy who plays solid defense. You know, he's a solid hitter. He's just, you know, very... It's a very, like... I think it's just a good move. And obviously for the Rays, um, this is just what they do. And it's, they're just a machine. Um, I, I sad at young me, starting pitcher. Every time... It, it times me, I think Evan Longoria is going to be the only above-average um, position player to play for more than, you know, like five years on the Rays in their history. But I, mean, I wish they could keep more talent. But... I mean, from their perspective, I think it's also... I think it's an A-minus from them and a B-plus for the Dodgers. Okay. Evan Longoria is just going to be on their team. He's going to be their only hitter for the rest of race history yeah, while exactly. they have a bunch of young starting pitching. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we? I, I I agree with most of that. You know, I like I like the Dodgers playing it safe this year. They're, they, you know, we got... Jansen and Turner, we know what they can do for us. We we like them. We want to keep them. Forsyth is probably one of the safer players out there production wise when he's on the field. Um, I'm really excited about DeLeon with the Rays though. We've seen what the Rays can do, and that's all I'll say about that because there's not much more to say. It was a simple trade, fits both needs. Let's talk about some free agents that fit some needs for some teams. Um, one of the uh, the big the big contracts that happened. This was a little while ago now, but Encarnacion signing with the Indians. Um, he's basically playing the same role that Napoli did last year. Um, you know, uh, what was, what was the contract again? The they got him for, uh... um, I'll, I'll find out. You guys can talk about it. Yeah, we're very prepared. Um, <laughs> anyway, Encarnacion basically fits the same role Napoli did, as I mentioned. But I definitely think he... It was a three-year 60. Three or sixty, yeah. I mean, that's. I think there's a like another option for a fourth year too, but you know, considering he will receive a hundred fifty thousand dollars if the Indians draw two million fans in any year of his contract. Yes, that's that's, the, really that's the real takeaway right there. Those are the crucial facts we needed for about. Thank you. <laughs> that's really I was, sad. I was I was actually going to ask you I was, what bonus does he get depending on um, Cleveland Indians home attendance, but I <laughs> you you beat me. To I, it, so thank I you. saw it. It was really sure. funny. Yeah, I mean, I, can consistent power hitter like that's that's all he is, and you know what, it's I, le- he's less oh, dynamic sorry. than he used Go to ahead. be. But you know, he's still just great at hitting homers. So, I, what I like about the, what interests me about this move, does, it's not even him. It's that I really like that this Indians team, who hasn't spent really any, excluding that one off season where for some reason they think they signed Nick Swisher and. Um, that other guy who sucks now to long term contracts, Michael Bourne. Oh um, yeah, that like was... that off season. Like they haven't spent any money like ever in as long as I can remember, um, on like, you know, free agents. 
And I like that, you know, they recognize that, wow, like, we're, by far, we're, gonna, be like, we're gonna be definitely be the best team in this division next year. We have just as good of a chance to go back to the World Series as last year. We should, could have, we should have won the World Series. We were one, you know, went away without or basically our entire starting um, rotation. We're getting all our guys back. We're getting Brantley back. We're gonna be a lot healthier. You know, a great manager, great momentum. Like this is it. Like this, we're like, you know, it's time to just put in our chips. And um, not that Napoli didn't have a good year, but Napoli had a great year. He had. A, I'm saying not that he didn't have a good year. It was, but it was above average I, for him. I would. Say I too. would rather. I have really like enough. this move for Encarnacion. He's perfect for the team. I, I think they're, you know, right now, I think they have to be the favorites in the American League. As good as the Red Sox, as good as the offseason the Red Sox had, um, I'm sure we'll discuss that. I, I, I think, um, you know, it's just an outstanding move for them. Mm-hmm. So Encarnacion should have stayed with the Blue Jays, though. He, they offered him more money. His agent should be fired, just by, just <laughs> yeah. by the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't argue with that. Like, should have... Definitely would have had a really good chance to win with the Blue Jays if he stayed also. But the thing about that I like with the Indians getting a guy like Encarnacion is he's he's very battle-tested in the big moments, in the postseason. He is definitely as clutch as they come. Obviously hit the big one against uh, not Zach Britton in the, the wild card game. And, uh, you know, he he's battle-tested. They're getting guys in there that, you know, when they're not just thinking about the regular season which you know what he's going to do but you're also thinking about what you're getting in october when you need the big at bats you need as many clutch hitters in there as you can and you know they they lost uh rajay davis who was the uh, the big hero last year um but you know it's guys like that with battle-tested experienced guys that you add to these teams that really put you over the top and i like it all around also rajay davis to the oakland days that's that's a minor very minor note Literally, like the perfect pairing of player and team. I must, I have to just say. I think he's like, like the new. They were played for them before. They were totally meant to be together. He's played for them. Am I wrong? He's the new Coco Crisp. Has he really played for them before? I'm, I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't be shocked. Davis has been around a little bit, but yeah, like I, I don't see why Davis really hasn't played a regular role in the last couple years, but like he's still putting up huge numbers when he when he plays throughout the course of the season with, you know, significantly less at bats than some other, you know, regular outfielders. So, um, from a fantasy standpoint, that's a really good team for him to go to. Cause he's definitely going to get plenty of playing time depending on how he performs, obviously, cause they will, you know, get him out of there and throw in a young guy as soon as possible. If things go badly from the start, but, um, yeah, still a great player, great base dealer and everything. So, um, yeah, let's get back to the big boys, though. The big boppers um, that have signed recently. This one was probably, like, the most meh, deflating one of the offseason is Bautista <laughs> signing back with the Blue Jays for, like, one year and, like, is, $18 million. Like, <laughs> What a bizarre career that man has had. I mean, you can't, you yeah. can't make this shit up. How did that guy end up only with... Was it eighteen million dollars? Yeah. That what you said? Yeah, I think so. How in the fuck did that like that guy was in top, was top five MVP? MVP uh, like he was in top five MVP voting. I think three seasons in a row at one point, and that was only like one or two years ago. And it's not like like yes, like this year like he was was a down year, but he was hurt a lot, and like the power I seems to be pretty decently there. The fact that no one offered him a multi year deal. I do, and I think there is a like a mutual option after this year, um, in his Blue Jays contract. But I, I'm shocked, and like I think it shows that maybe the MLB front office as a whole are finally kind of getting smarter free agents, which is, you know, good for com- competition and stuff. But I mean, I would have offered him two years, thirty six. I would just double that, like a hundred percent. I don't. I'm very surprised. I was thirty six. I, uh, I'm just. And how he never finessed his previous production into a contract extension. Oh, my God. He, he, had, he had his chances. He's definitely had his chances. So his agent should be fired. I think he lost over $100 million. And there's no... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he was in negotiations <laughs> earlier this season. For yeah, the so you're basically fired. saying... This season. Right? <laughs> yeah, this past this season. Pretty... It's crazy. So his agent should be fired. His, his agent's ridiculously horrible. I mean, wow. I... I what a misjudgment! I think one of the worst I've ever seen. Sorry, go ahead, guys. I'm just 
I'm very surprised that Jose Bautista is on a one-year deal right now. It's, again, not as expected at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely not the same. Like, the defense is basically non-existent anymore. Like, he's just... He, the injuries have definitely caught up to him. Like, just little things here and there that really just, you know, nailed him down and made it hard for him to do anything other than sit in the batter's box and hit home runs. But, you know, that's worth paying for, especially... As I mentioned, you know, you're talking about guys that are battle tested and can get it done in the big moments. Any contending team out there probably should have been saying, you know what? I know we're giving up a draft pick, but I definitely want Jose Bautista um, hitting, you know, cleanup for me in the, you know, the championship series if our team, if we think we're going to get there. So um, that is the real head scratcher is why no team, all these teams are like, we want to keep our picks. We want, we want to keep our picks. And they're like, it it used to not be that big of a problem, and they just decided it wasn't worth it. I guess. But, My know. bad. So I I was trying to open up. Um, what was your bad? Agents page. Do you guys oh, not hear that? No, we didn't. No. Perfect. Oh, sorry. 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 Sorry, sorry, for, sorry, sorry for nothing. For All right. <laughs> um. Hey, good job, Rudy. Yeah. All so right. another big bopper, Mark Trumbo. He resigned with his team as well. He got. That was sad. He uh he got a few years on his contract though but basically no, his nothing. agent fired fire his agent <laughs> three years this fire all the like agents season. three years this like 37 million to get rid of the agents <laughs> it, was, it was just wow i I, I, not, I don't even disagree with it like i actually think it is like okay th- here's the thing that i'm confused about trumbo like if like and bautista too so like these two contracts like, I think they're actually really good team-friendly contracts, and I, like, really tip my hat to the, you know, the Orioles and the Blue Jays for getting those deals, but I just cannot understand how, like, we have, like, let's say the Ellsbury contract, and, like, just for example, of an Albatross, like, the Trumbo contract, separated by, like, like, like I don't know how this offseason suddenly became, like, wait a second. We, all the GMs like some secret meeting, like in Bud Stewart's basement, and like <laughs> we all basement. overpaying all the free agents crazy bad. Like Matt didn't like leak get like a hundred eight million last off season. Mike Leak, you think Mike Leak? Like he said, you're telling me he deserves three times as much as Mark Trumbo? There's no way. Jeff Samarja. No okay, there's no way three times. The I'm players just really Trumbo, right, guys. Like I, I, I completely agree. I'm these free agencies. I, I don't disagree with the contracts, but. This the market has just changed so much, and I feel like no one's talking about it. When did we go from massively overpaying guys like Zach Greinke to suddenly getting a forty home run guys for thirteen million dollars a league or a year or whatever? I mean, I, I I'm so confused. And what's really crazy is like it's not that the big contracts are gone, but they're going to like Jason Haywards and Dexter Fowlers. Like, like these guys are more athletic and more versatile defensively, obviously, but. You know, at least Hayward really was not that big of a lineup presence, and I don't know exactly how Fowler's leadoff abilities are going to translate to any other team but the Cubs because before oh, then, was, he, before then he was he was an okay hitter. He wasn't he wasn't really a four year eighty million dollars is, hitter. Which teams with each other? You know, you know what just hmm. kind of I'm I'm just kind of annoyed because I I wanted this to happen. I wanted like I'd rather have the Trumbo. I'd I'd rather have Trumbo on the Rockies or in some insane hitters park, just because he can Camden play. Camden Yards is about as insane a hitters yeah, park as you'll find. Other than yeah, but court. Yeah, Camden Yards is a pretty large hitters park. So I don't know. I, I'd kind of, I kind of wish the Rockies used um, the Desmond money to put Trumbo at first. That was an interesting oxymoron right there. It's a pretty large hitters park. Um, yeah, no, like I, I agree, like. <laughs> A pretty large, pretty large. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, Trumbo, like the big thing is like his WAR is really just not impressive at all because of his defense. But then, yeah. like you just you think about if he if he just didn't play him on defense, his WAR I think probably I think it would have been close to three, which is very very worth a three year thirty seven million dollar contract considering he will also lead the majors in home runs, which isn't bad. Um, that's it's unbelievable the shift it used to be like get any power you can scoop up on the market like right away i just i'm just confused like uh, uh, it's it's bizarre and like 
I'm not complaining. I think it's really like I don't like. I'd I'd rather teams be smart about their money. Like I think that makes the league better overall. But like, what I'm just curious, like, what caused this revaluation when they got with the like it's I guess they just finally all cut up to like the everyone else and they finally realized oh wait like these guys who only hit home runs and provide no other production aren't as valuable aren't as ridiculously valuable as we thought they were is that is this finally like got smart like you just don't usually see these kind of things in sports where like there's a general trend um outside of the front offices that is held by fans and media that the that they push for a while and then it just kind of goes away because it, it just becomes part of the game, such as overpaying these power hitters. And then suddenly the sport actually catches up with like the criticism. You know, does that make any sense or not? It's, really? uh, it's not so much about the criticism it's received. I think it's it's 100% about advanced metrics. Like the, it's so it, widely available but why now? for teams. Why now, I guess? Why, well, I mean, advanced metrics are relatively new. Yeah, they're and pretty the, for a long they're pretty time, fresh. The most tangible numbers you could see are this guy's putting up really impressive RBI home run totals. And that's what we want. We want guys who will drive in lots of runs for our team. And I need to pay them lots of money so they don't drive in runs for other teams. It was very simple in that regard. But now you see wins above replacement. Def- and like The defensive metrics are better than they've ever been. Um, you know, stat cast metrics too like really help with that. Um, it's It's just a lot more knowledge now. And you have to really analyze all this stuff to make sure you're spending your money wisely and a lot of times it doesn't work but you know on the pitching side too you talk about like these advanced metrics and these peripheral numbers for pitchers that really you know if you talk about giving jeff samarja 90 million dollar well he got 90 million right when he signed with the giants he got a lot of money as well yeah um it was something like that and he and um like he had an awful year like he had an era over four or yeah, he had an year over four. Yeah, he had sure. a terrible and year. That's uh, that would have been unheard of if you were talking about like a more traditional, older, you know, winter set in winter off season setting with like, oh, I'm not gonna sign this guy because this guy's numbers that I know are really not good. But now you can dig deeper and say, you know, this guy's strikeout rate is pretty good. You know, he he possibly the ballpark factor just really took him out of his element in, you know, Oakland and you know in in chicago especially and you know he he was having a lot of bad luck with his uh you know with this certain type of ball and play like they they can they can take a lot of different paths in their thinking now other than i don't like this guy's numbers and i'm not going to yeah. take him or i like this guy's numbers i really have to make sure i spend lots of money to get him there's lots of middle ground and the spending is really bizarre now it is it's going to take a while to get used to i don't know if we'll ever get used to it but no, we every year really there's sh- just some contracts that we we just shake, like we have to scratch our heads about. We'll never get used to it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the trend because you know these teams have access I mean, to so much more information than we have, really. So can I give like just a like a just a couple examples to compare like just what the market was like two years ago? Mm-hmm. Or was that too tangential? I mean, two years ago is not that not so not that different, what? but it definitely like it's still. I, I do agree. It definitely maintained the same philosophies like, of old. Like, uh, Victor Martinez at 35 signed for four years, $68 million. Yeah, and that, uh, like, that's that's crazy just considering... Got Monty Tomas at six years, $68.5 million. Um, Hanley Ramirez, you know, his contract, which was a huge amount of money for Kai Gameplay defense. Pablo Sandoval's Pablo Sandoval um, was actually a pretty good defender until he he was that until he wasn't. I was, <laughs> um, you know, there's that Nelson Nelson Cruz got four years, fifty seven million. I think he's a broadly comparable player to Trumbo, right? Oh, Nelson is Cruz right? is much better than Mark Trumbo. You think he's much better? Much better. Was he much, he batting much averages better? over the Coming last the four seasons. Over the last four seasons, okay. his batting average is somewhere between two eighty and two ninety. And he hit three hundred okay. in two of those four in two okay. of those last four seasons. I mean, I'm, I'm sure for Trumbo it hurt him a lot that um, he, uh, he he's an incredibly inconsistent player. I'm sure if he you know was coming off back to back forty home run years, mm-hmm. um, he would have gone or back to back to back. It would have helped him a lot instead you know, of yeah. I mean, I could out of a career. I could ride the Trumbo train for a long time because I do. I do have a lot of like opinions about this player in particular and you know the 
the things that could have gone differently for him and I'm sure Forbode feels the same way following him from the Angels but um yeah the, po- the point is I think just it's not cuz he's a bad player it's cuz this year was the first ye- the, the full first full season that he had in a long time to really show off his power and you know it's always been there since he was in Anaheim basically yeah like the 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 stints in um Arizona and in Seattle really just kind of screwed with him on a yeah. on like a on uh, it's it's hard it's not a really analytical level it's from like a like mechanical and you know comfort <laughs> standpoint with your team and not having a, a secure role and all all that kind of stuff it's just playing time and it, like to to get consistent yeah. he needed consistent playing you time and he really, was hurt you could definitely go really deep into this with lots of players but the point is the power is there it's always been there the the stat cast numbers exit velocity he is one of the tops in exit velocity and launch angle like he when he hits the ball it's going to be a home run there's a reason he led the league in home runs um and it's it's his approach that's that's how it is and it is worth it in many cases to have that kind of power presence in your lineup um cuz it 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 carries throughout your lineup i don't know if that makes any sense but when you have to be very careful with certain hitters in the lineup, it makes the rest of the lineup more dynamic. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. I, Perfect. I, All right. I get that. Um, yeah, so those were the big, big free agents um, that signed recently. Even then, like, it's it's not a huge offseason. Those are those are the big ones for now. Um, but, you know, there's there's still some guys floating around out there. We'll talk about those later on. Um, we we need guy, to make this offseason great again. Make this offseason great again. Barboda, apparently, you guys, your angels signed Luis Valbuena. It's like a very... He's actually had a low-key, pretty smart off, pretty smart offseason. I'll give you credit. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, Valbuena's going to be the same player as he was in Houston. Probably with a little less power, even. So, I don't know. We'll see. He's a solid guy, though. For yeah, good backup player. Um, another... One of the really intriguing, like, minor deals that I wanted to talk about was Tyson Ross signing with the Rangers. Um... This anybody remember Tyson Ross? Raise your hand if you remember Tyson Ross, because he was one of the uh, the premier pitchers in the game. Like his body type seemed like for he, one year. Yeah, he, he looked like he was gonna break out entirely, and then just everything everything hit the fan. Um, what are you guys' thoughts though about next year with Tyson Ross? So unpredictable. Oh, with, but yeah, it's you you with Tyson Ross. I don't know. Um, I thought you were talking about the Rangers. I was. I Seems like a you know good. kind of a Josh Johnson type scenario, maybe less extreme. Where it's Josh Johnson just retired, pretty big. He did finally. Yeah, three times. Yeah. Johnson will do that to you, I guess. Pretty big crossroads in his career. Um, coming off, uh, he he was injured last year a decent amount, oh, yeah. right? I think all all last year. All most the vast majority. Um, you know, he was reaching his peak before that. It seemed like for his career. Um, I it's, I mean it's pretty much. You know, I would say this is like this is the year he's either gonna, you know, come back to his, you know, twenty thirteen, fourteen, uh, fifteen form, or you know, this is like kind of the end of his, you know, his career as a yeah. top, as like a, as a regular starter in the major league. So, yeah. so I'm pulling from you, know, but you know, we'll see. So, per- just personal opinion, Intri- Are you intrigued or are you kind of like meh about? You know, Very like- intrigued, yes. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on him. Um, um, him and Chrome is both on that team. I'm very interested to see how they'll go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was another little noteworthy thing. Uh, Will Myers got a contract extension with the Padres. Speaking of spending money. Uh, Good I, for him. I like that. Good for Will him. Because Will Myers is more athletic than people give him credit for, I think. Like, people think of him as just, the, like, a pretty good hitter. But he's, he's definitely he can definitely handle himself at, fir- at first base, especially, was a great transition for him um i think i think it's a good move i think the padres know that yeah, no. they have a lot of prospects they're definitely still in a rebuilding mode but we don't want to risk anything with will myers like we want him to be the guy for us and i think he can be 100 percent, i think he can be i mean mo- most of all good for him he's he's just he he has such potential and he has such um, like he's he's good and he's, he can be good. It's just his injuries. And last year it was was the first year in a while that he's stayed on the field, and we got to see part of like we got to see what he can do and what he can get better from here if he can stay on the field. So good for him. I'm happy. 
Yeah. Will Myers fan, if you can't tell. Will Myers. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. Let's talk about something else that's very exciting. Hall of Fame. Uh-oh. It's always controversial. It's always a fun time. Oh, man. Here we go. Um, no, th- it's really not that controversial this year, though. It- it's definitely been more controversial in the past. But uh, Jeff Bagwell, Tim Raines, and uh, Yvonne Pudge Rodriguez, all three of them, are Hall of Famers. And that's very deserved for all of them, for that. of course. But, like, the, the most of the... If anything, the controversial part you're going to talk about is Trevor Hoffman missing it by, like, and 1%. Vlad. And Vladdy missing it by, you know, like, I think, like, 3%. But... I mean, although I'll, I'll tell you that, I mean, them missing it by 1% or 3% doesn't mean, like, they're ne- never going to make it. They're going to pr- get in most likely next year. But for now, I think, I mean, good for Tim Raines, who has who's been on the ballot for quite some time now. Um, Pudge, that's that's a I, I love Pudge, and then good, good for Jeff Bagwell. You're very congratulatory today. It's it's it's, it's quite I'm, refreshing. I'm a second semester senior now. I'm kind of happy. You're just in a you're just in a good mood. I I've like been it. in a good mood since finals. If we're done. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, but that's. That's pretty much all that's happened. It's been a really slow off season. Um, you know, I'm just really excited for the season. I'm really excited for the World Baseball Classic. You guys are, I'm Very sure, excited too. Excited for that. I want to see Ryan Dempster and Eric Garner pitch. Oh my God! I can't believe <laughs> Team Canada gonna is going to be something to watch. Canadian games. They have such risky pitching. It's, ah, I like. They could be good, but their pitching is just it, it could just not they could just not have pitching if it doesn't work out for them the american team's good israel has a team that's israel, israel has a team <laughs> that's like, no way, apparently um, um the netherlands have like eight hebrew hammers the hebrew hammers <laughs> the hebrew hammers yeah the tomers the netherlands have like eight Nobody middle infielders like <laughs> um yeah anyway um yeah, World Baseball Classic. Excited. Um and also Go baseball. Also, I you know, this this is this is a time where we wind down and I plug all the things that I normally do, even though, you know, nobody really listens. But if anybody is listening, I really insist that you check out the top one hundred fantasy baseball rankings that I released recently. Um I'm working on the top two fifty. It'll take me a little bit more time. It'll probably be ready closer to when the you know fantasy baseball season actually starts but top 100 are out now um you know i spent a lot of time on it i wrote some uh wrote a little bit about some of the players that are more i guess controversial on my list and you know if i'd love to know any feedback that any of you have uh any questions i will for sure answer i'm sure these guys will definitely uh love it as well um of course there's twitter you can tweet us at wpb underscore podcast you can check out our website, which the link is down below for that. We did revamp the website. Um, it's different. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but it is a different website now. And uh, that should be um, – I think I like it a lot better. What do you guys think? You, you guys like the new website, right? It's cool. I, 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 I like the, definitely I like the improvement. Website. Yeah, all right. Um, so that's about all. Feedback, of course, appreciated in any way, shape, or form. Questions, you know, any, anything, anything at all. Um, we'll we'll accept it with open arms. And, we're begging. Uh, we're begging, actually. You know, we won't just accept it. We're kind of begging at this point. Um, we'll we'll get better at begging for for feedback. Anyway, um, thank you all for joining us. I hope you guys have a great off season, as as good of an off season as you can without baseball. I would say. Um, that's all. As always, Farbode. Peace.